Hey everybody, got my uh, K-Pro 10 here which I recently restored back into service. Uh, looks like that's focused probably about as well as it can be. Sorry for the shaky camera here, I'm going to try and get it to focus a little better. Okay. That I think is as good as it's going to get. So, uh, I was talking to my friend Chris this evening about um, working on CPM and, and hacking some code on CPM. And uh, he'd never used CPM before, and I don't know if he's even seen what it looks like to interact with the CPM machine. A um, little background on the project that I'm about to demonstrate. Uh, ever since I got this K-Pro going, uh, I was just absolutely amazed that its serial port was running at full tilt at 19200 without dropping any characters or any problems. Uh, I've always had some amount of problems with going faster than maybe about 2400 baud uh, on any of the CPM machines that I've used over the years. Uh, what I found was that whenever I got mechs uh, and compiled or assembled mechs, um, it really wasn't reliable at anything over 1200 baud and I tweaked buffers and stuff like that and I didn't really get any improvement out of it so I wanted to try and uh, put together buy and see if buy would do the same thing so max and might are uh, terminal programs so that the, this computer can connect to a remote host and use it buy is the opposite of that buy is a program that listens to the modem for a call to come in and then hands over control of the computer to the remote user and most often this was used with uh, a BBS software so Bi would sit there and uh, and wait for the caller so I'll go ahead and run it here and so it's waiting for a caller um, the code has two methods of operation it'll either uh, work with the smart modem in which case whenever the smart modem answers and connects it tells Bi uh, what speed it connected at uh, which is very convenient um, or it can run in dumb modem mode where if your highest baud rate is higher than 300 it has to go through a cycle of trying to determine what baud rate the caller is at and it'll maybe spit out some garbage, caller has to hit return um, it, once it gets to the right baud rate by the text that you actually sent return and not garbage and then it knows your baud rate. Well I want it to just jump straight to it because I'm not using a modem for this test I've got it direct connected into the annex. Don't mind that noise. That hard drive's got a, a bearing that squeals every now and then. It'll go away. Um, so I've got it directly connected to the annex so that I can remote into it from anywhere. And uh, so I'll do that here. I've got over here. I've got a uh, putty connection connected to my Linux machine. I'll connect from there to the annex. I'm connected. I hit a key. It tells me hit a key. I need to fix that bug. But it's at 9600, and I'm using, I'm using the machine just fine from remote. Like if I say uh, type uh, B5 time, and it will start outputting the contents of that on both screens at the same time. And it's not dropping any characters, and that's the main thing I wanted to see. But what I wanted to demonstrate for Chris specifically, and maybe for some other users, is how long the process takes in order to edit the file, change one thing, save the file, assemble it, load it, run it, test it. So, okay, at this point I need to hang up, which, you know, I haven't renamed the file, it's still got the version number on there, but if this was an RCPM, you would say buy, and then it disconnects you. Over here it says uh, the connection was closed to the annex. And so he says he's waiting for a call, exit out of that, now I'm back in local mode and uh, I need to jump onto user 4 on the A drive. Yes, I should have ZCPR, but I got sidetracked with this whole serial thing. I uh, haven't finished building it yet. Anyhow, so WordStar. And we wait for WordStar to load and we will load by 510.asm. It's loading the file, thinking about it, turn off the help screens, um, and I want to find the label ANSWA colon, 
And so it's going to search through this 144k source file until it finds that subroutine. Hopefully I remembered the label correctly this time. Does it still look focused to you guys? Well, it's doing this. I'll try and make it focus again. Arg. Arg, I'll hold it still and focus. Okay, that's about the best I'm probably going to be able to focus it. Sorry guys, I don't have professional videography equipment. Alright, so it's found the routine. So here in this routine, this is after it's it's detected that the call has come in. It knows that we're not using an intelligent modem. In the original code, it would have come in here and said set 90 or set 300 baud. Um, it didn't have routines for 9600. Uh, the insert file for the KPro didn't have the baud rate uh, control port values for for 9600 or 19200. Um, and what it would do is it, it would answer at 300. It would send out something to the caller saying, hey, hit a, hit a key. If you had de debug progress turned on on the console locally, it would say, you know, testing for 300 baud. And uh, hopefully, eventually, it would cycle to 1200 and then to 2400, and then that was the maximum that it would do. Um, but we've changed it here, and I'll scroll down a couple pages here, and you can see uh, I've commented out a lot of this routine up here, so I'll jump back up to where we were at on answer A. And we want to change this guy to 19200 as the default and only that it's going to try and do. Oops. Uh, so, so I had to both tell it that I want to call set 19200. And then I also need to set the, the modem speed to 19200. Um, so it keeps that data in two locations. Why we call set 19200 and then after we're there and we've returned, we have to set this other memory location. I'm not sure. Um, but who cares? That's not the point of this. So now I'm going to save the file. Keep in mind again, this is a 144K file on a machine that has 64K of RAM of which before you load uh, WordStar you only have like 58k to work with um, so it uses backup files and stuff like that so that it can save the things that you've changed and then it can go back and resave the file and it's constantly going through and just looking at a chunk of the file at a time um, but then whenever you tell it you want to write it back out it has to do essentially a bunch of copy work um, to put that uh, those changes on top of the backup file and save it as the new file. So here we are. Um, I'll jump back to user zero on the B drive and I need to get that file into here. So a colon pip b colon equals by 510.asm square bracket g4 square bracket to tell it that it's coming from user 4 on, oops, I forgot to put A, so we'll say again, A pip, B colon equals A colon, uh, by 510 ASM, bracket G, 4 bracket. And so now that file is copying over here where I can, uh, I can assemble it. Now I said something earlier uh, about ZCPR. Um, this is straight CPM. Uh, the regular standard stock CCP that, CC, C, that CPM works with. Um, for those that don't know ZCPR, it's a replacement for the uh, the, the command processor for uh, for CPM, and it gives you a lot of extra benefits. Like you know, up here where I said uh, user zero and then B, uh, I, instead with ZCPR I could do something like B zero colon, and it would just take me to user zero on B. Users are like directories on CPM. Um, so here we are. We've got the file over here. A ASM by 510.bbz, and we will start assembling it. That'll take a while. Um, another th other things that you gain from ZCPR is the ability to kind of have the equivalent of DOS's uh, path statement, to where you can have files on various different locations and you can call them without having to specify the location of where they come from and uh, other things too like having named directories where essentially you get like a new device name that takes you directly to a specific 
uh, location in the file system. Um, of course, some things like WordStar aren't really compatible with it. Um, it should run under ZCPR. I, I can't say that I recall ever having done that. Um, but by itself, you know, if you tell it, uh, even even just the way it is, you can't really tell it to go to a different user number as far as I'm aware of. So if I had told it that I wanted to work with a copy of <coughs> by ASM that's in B0, <coughs> if I told it to log to drive B, it would have showed me everything that was in drive B's user 4 since WordStar exists in user 4 on the A drive on a Capra. Um, and that might be confusing to folks that don't do CPM or never used a Capro 10 either. Um, if you boot off of the floppy drive, it is A, and your two partitions on the 10 meg drive are B and C. If you boot off of the hard drive, the first partition of the hard drive is A, second is B, and the floppy becomes C. Um, very strange to people who are from a DOS world, but, uh, you know, it's just kind of the way that this stuff works. So, yeah, it takes a long time to compile, or excuse me, assemble 144K of source code, but it has made an 8K hex file for us. I know this because I've done this 26 times tonight. Um, and so load uh, by 510. And so this is going to make a 4K, 4K.com binary. Um, and I'll show you that here. Uh, Exeter by 510.star. How about that? Uh, so that'll bring up the extended directory. And it's going to show us that the ASM is 144, the hex is 8, and the final product is only 4K. Uh, that's actually its size on disk. Its size in memory may be less than that. Anywhere from th like 3 to 4K. It's more than 3, but less than 4.00001. <laughs> Sorry, it's late and I'm getting a little bit silly. Um, so anyhow, here's by... And we'll go ahead and run by 510. I've changed it to 19200. What I need to do here now, jump over here and set port equals 31, speed 19200, reset port equals 31. And now, whenever I call back, we'll be at 19200. And uh, looks like it's going to work. I'm at the B prompt directory, no drops characters. Right by 510.asm, which is a nice long file, and that ought to stream just about almost as fast as it would on the console if we weren't going through the serial port. I think the console runs slightly faster than 19.2, but not quite as fast as 38.4. Um, since it's not a serial device, it doesn't really need to have a baud rate, but it does have a speed that it runs at, and this is less than that. Um, so, yeah. That works, and if I do buy 510 from the remote side again, it hangs up. We're back to waiting for a call. And just to show you the difference in the speed there, I'll exit back out to CPM, and I'll do type by 510.asm, and let's see if it looks like it goes any faster. Yeah, it looks like it's about double as fast, so maybe it is going 38.4 on, uh, on the CRT. But uh, 19.2 is plenty fast enough to work from remote. So maybe now, whenever I have spare cycles at work, I can leave this guy going and have by running on it <clears throat> and possibly uh, uh, get it to uh, uh, let me work on, on uh, getting ZCPR. Um, of course, the, the terrible thing is that I don't have any kind of terminal emulator other than another Capro that speaks Capro uh, terminal codes, you know, terminal control codes. So uh, if I was on, if I was still online, and I jumped over here and I did WordStar, this guy over here, he would scroll the screen and then he would start printing this out, but nothing would be tabbed to the correct location. And of course, none of this would be uh, uh, inverted or, you know, the stuff that gets underlined wouldn't get underlined. And, uh, you know, part of, the, part of the other thing is that none of this would be spaced out correctly even. All this would be jumped up against all this, and this would be just a bunch of lines because this guy's saying, "Hey, go back to, go to this cursor location and draw that line, and go to that cursor location and draw that line." So, uh, yeah, maybe that's the next thing I need to try is uh, either get my other Capro 10 working or grab one of my uh, one of my non-hard drive Capros 
and uh, fire it up and see if I run might on that if, if I get uh, full word star emulation. <laughs> Never tried that before. But uh, we'll exit out of this. And when you're using a K Pro 10, always make sure to run safety before you shut it off, which sets your hard drive to not ready and parks the heads so that you can shut it down and have some peace and quiet whenever that old bearing starts rattling like that. Y'all have a good evening. Bye.